to the high level dialogue, to the final session of the high level dialogue on social cohesion, as well as the European Policy Dialogue Forum 2021. This session is dedicated to the way forward. Before we start, you can see on your tables a printed evaluation sheet. Please use the chance to fill out that form as we are very interested in your impression, feedback, and suggestions as we always strive to improve. Note that you can find in the app, as well as in the attendee hub, a QR code where you can fill the feedback online as well. Now it is my pleasure to invite Professor Mohammed Abu Nima, Senior Advisor at the International Dialogue Center, Kai Seed, on stage, whereby the two speakers will be joining virtually. At the end, the partners and supporters of this high-level dialogue on social cohesion are offering their closing remarks, reflections, and way forward. Professor Abu Nima, the floor is yours. Good afternoon. By now, you know I am a closing guy. <laughs> so I close things. Um, that's the task we have together. We have about 55 minutes. And um, the closing will be with three sections. Two speakers virtual. And then we will have some uh, comments from you on the, from the floor. Uh, so I'm going to put an exercise, do a very brief exercise with you. And then we'll give the three partners to say their brief uh, closing remark, which I'm sure they'll be brief and, to the, uh, uh, and uplifting also to everyone. Um, so I will not try to uh, summarize anything. Maybe from the beginning we start with... Um, actually, is it ready? Can you project the points or we should go to the speakers? Speakers? Oh, excellent, good. If the speakers are ready, then we start with um, His, uh, His Excellency Professor Stefan Giannini, Assistant Director General of Education at the UNESCO, and this is a recorded message. Go ahead. Dear experts, ladies and gentlemen, it's a great honor to share some key reflections today to conclude this high-level dialogue on social cohesion countering a speech in Europe. And I thank uh, the International Dialogue Center and European Council of Religious Leaders for having brought us together for these timely discussions. While the world is at grips with the shadow pandemic, whose virus is just as contagious and deadly as COVID-19, simple like this. It's one of hatred and racism, it's one of rejection of the other and of dehumanization. UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres has warned that, quoting, globally hate speech is on the rise, including anti-Semitism, anti-Muslim hatred and persecution of Christians. Social media and other forms of communication are being exploited as platforms for bigotry. So what can be done now? You have already identified some concrete recommendations for bridging the divides in European societies through inclusive partnerships and sustainable interventions. Because addressing hate speech is a kind of complex endeavor which includes uh, tackling its root causes and drivers, preventing it from translating into violence and dealing with wider societal consequences. UNESCO's convention is that education but must be an integral part of every response strategy. And part of the solution is through education that we can develop critical thinking and deconstruct prejudice and its roots. It's through education that we can learn to respect the other in his or her difference, to become aware that what unites us is stronger than what separates us. At UNESCO, we believe that education is a powerful tool to address a speech as many other challenges, because it has the potential to promote inclusion, social cohesion, and intercultural dialogue. It can instill values of respect for human rights and diversity, social justice and gender equality. And also it can transform uh, the men and women mind. In recent months, we have deployed new education initiatives to combat racism and anti-Semitism, 
which plans to expand training programs for policymakers, teachers, trainers and educators. We launched a media and information literacy curriculum for teachers with a view to helping youth debunk the false narratives that provoke hate. We are supporting teachers to build the resilience uh, of learners to conspiracy theories. And because we must better understand this phenomenon to combat it, we have launched a study with the Oxford Internet Institute on the impact of online hate speech and another with the UN and the World Jewish Congress to map the manifestation of Holocaust distortion on social media platforms. It will inform the development of educational guidance and learning tools. Well, education is a strategic investment for all countries to address the root causes and drivers of its speech and to mitigate its devastating impact. This is the principle underpinning the Global Education Ministers' Conference on addressing its speech through education to be held next week on 26 October. The conference will be convened by UN Secretary General and chaired by UNESCO's Director General, alongside Member States co-chairs. The event is organized by UNESCO and the Office of the UN Special Advisor on the Prevention of Genocide, with many thanks to France, Lithuania, Portugal, Qatar, the Republic of Korea and the European Union for their kind and concrete support. As today's event takes place in Lisbon, I would like to stand gratitude to the government of Portugal and especially to Education Minister Tiago Brandao Rodriguez for his unwavering commitment to addressing a speech through education and its commitment as a whole for the 2030 Agenda. Combating aid is uh, everyone's responsibility. The Global Ministerial Conference is a critical moment to unite and to strengthen educational responses so that learners become resilient to exclusionary rhetoric and hate speech itself. I hope you will join us for this occasion and once again, warmly, once again, thank you for your commitment to this universal cause. Thank you. We've heard from a policymaker and also expert in some ways. Uh, now we hear from a religious leader um, inviting uh, Baha'i Sahib Mohander Singh from uh, the UK, a chairman of the Guru Nanak Siwak Jatha as well. I'm sorry if I massacred the title. Thank you. It is a privilege to be here. Please accept six greetings. Wahiguru Ji Ka Khalsa, Wahiguru Ji Ki Fateh. Warm greetings to all. Today we live in a world which is being recognized not only as post-colonial but also post-secular. This promises a new relationship between the spiritual and the secular and between faith traditions themselves. This provides now an unprecedented role of faith to collaborate with the secular in developing and enacting effective and sustainable solutions for the very many crises we are in. We must remember, hate does not only harm others, it is a form of self-harm. Hate emanates from deep within the mind. Policies can control the outward production of hate, speech, However, its emergence is in the mind and it must be tackled for lasting change. We have a Sikh teaching, Man Jite Jag Jeet. If you want to change the world and overcome its challenges, you must first conquer your own mind. Since we are not born hating, we need to carefully analyze the spectrum of social factors that cause hate to breed and proliferate in unseen and visible ways. It is a symptom of the widespread mental health crisis. Its solutions lie in not only combating symptoms, but in changing the environments and life experiences that shape our mental habits and outlooks. Whilst hate Speech can be monitored or policed. 
it emerges from deeply ingrained beliefs, fears, and ignorance about the other. Experiences relate to our upbringing, education, and ongoing social exposure through the now mostly digital media. As six, our most basic root prayer calls on us to embody God's qualities of being without fear and without hate. As we begin the address, the migrant and the refugee crisis, we must inculcate and foster these two very basic qualities in children from a young age. Fear and hate are overcome when we lovingly and genuinely recognize our kinship as human beings with each other and God. The political status of being a migrant should also prompt us to realize that we are all in a strict sense temporarily domiciled on this mother planet. As a UK citizen, I'm conscious that the rift between the religious and secular spheres of life may be more deeply ingrained in mainland Europe. However, a new recognition of the dignity and worth of the world's religions would be the trademark of a truly progressive global society in an interconnected and interdependent global village. The noble political slogan of liberty, equality, and fraternity must ref reflect respect for dignity of difference. The respect for dignity of difference is important knowing that brothers and sisters can share a oneness without having to be the same. This allows no room for hate. I'll stop here. Thank you. Thank you all for your patience. Um, and thank you for our uh, virtual guest speaker as well. We will move now to uh, share with you the summary uh, and a few points from your working group, because as you know, you were in four different tracks, and each of the tracks had interesting discussions and hopefully recommendations and some uh, summary that they have. Can you please project that? So that's, uh, that's uh, panel number one uh, on online hate speech, awareness raising of hate speech through identification and accountability with the code of conduct, countering hateful narratives through critical thinking and promoting shared value. Those are the two suggestions we have. Obviously, for each of the panels, there are some more suggestions that will be shared with, the, uh, with our experts as well to make sure that these make it to the paper. Thank you. We go to the next one, please. The second group was on refugees and migrants and uh, the issue of hate speech. So the first one, formulate different narratives to have unified approach between religious communities and public authorities. And that's a challenge to have a common uh, approach for that. Facilitate, the second one, facilitate transformative encounters between local and European uh, level. Again, we're back into this need to bridge the local with the, with, the, with the regional as well as with the policy, high level policy, thank you. The third one, please. And that's the cross-cultural, the multi-faith, the cross-cultural, uh, sorry, cross-sectorial uh, uh, collaboration. Uh, developing diversity in existing structures, uh, related policy makers and religious actors. And that's a challenge we all facing right now. How do we bridge the gap between those two? The second one, improve representativity of religious uh, actors in governance, 
uh, structures to allow for better collaboration with civil society. And that's an issue also that has been repeated in the three days, uh, the degree and uh, scale of having of, of the diversity within government, within policy offices, the more diverse with the religious community, the more they are able to communicate and connect as well. We'll go to the last one. The issue of participation, uh, of uh, uh, again, general participation, urban civic participation, local partnership based on compassion, solidarity, and hope, promoting human dignity as the main values to uh, underline any collaboration and any partnership. And also reaching out to the other in, in the push for recognition. And this is particularly probably for those who uh, face marginalization and and uh, lack of recognition maybe as uh, as a as a group as well as a faith or a cultural culturally marginalized group these are four as i said generic and general recommendations obviously each group has their own uh, rich discussion our suggestion so thank you for the four groups as well apology for that we can't uh, take more details from each group uh, in terms of reporting but we've been together three days in a joint sessions and larger plenaries, and we have also people participating in the virtual sitting. And we did not talk together in the plenary. And before we go into the formal briefing, or formal closing from the three partners, I'd like to ask you, each individual, to take one, one, one and a half, 90 seconds and think about one thing, one or two things, but preferable one thing, that you're taking with you home, beside extra pound of food, <laughs> as a result of the buffet. So that will leave it for you. Beside the physical comfort, one thing that you're taking home, and for many of you, as you told me, this is your first time maybe since the corona pandemic, you're meeting people. So, identify one thing you said, I went to this event with Kaisid in Lisbon, and the hotel was good, the, the food was good, the tour was good, the museum was good, forget all of that. What gift you bring to them, what insight, what thing that you take out of this thematic uh, conference on refugees and, uh, and migrant? Your 90 second began. You don't need to tell me that. That's something for you, 90 seconds. And then you will talk about this in the small group for four or five minutes, and then we'll hear from our closing. And please do not copy from each other. <laughs> are, we, are we time?
You have one more minute. Okay, thank you, thank you all. I, I can hear the energy in the room, so, and I also can see you engaged. Uh, I hope you had a chance to debrief. We will take a few uh, comments from the floor. Uh, again, suggestions, comments. Uh, you wanna share what you take with you if you want or suggestions that you have by the end of those three days, and we do not take complaint at this stage. <laughs> so we basically want a suggestion, constructive one, and whatever you are taking with you. And we have limited time, so please be brief, and you know I can be, I have the mic so I can stop you. All right, please raise your hand because this thing is, go ahead please, stand. How, how much second, how many seconds I have? You have only 30 seconds to 40 seconds, go ahead. Okay, a big thank to everyone who I met and I, I didn't meet, thanks for the invitation. What I will take with me is a fact of the big gap with the refugee life and the people who work with refugee. I understand we share a lot of similarities. I want to take 20 seconds more. What I suggest, that this amazing dialogue continue. And I would love to take a part as a refugee and representing some targeted group that I work with. To be very close to this, I would love next year to see all these amazing brave people that we can organize such event near to a camp. We can share, I can assure you, refugee will cook for you. Thank you. The best food. Thank you. Uh, that's the, we'll, that's we'll leave my... it there, we'll leave it there. Thank yeah. you. <laughs> Thank you. Go ahead, please. Yes, sir, Reverend. Hi, Sivin Kit here from the Lutheran World Federation. I'd like to uh, bring one recommendation to whether it's Kaisid or those of us in this arena, is to uh, approach the social media platforms and to have us engage with them. I think this is a missing link. We talk a lot about them online, but they're not here. It would be good for us to engage, to also understand their community standards, the limitations, the regulations, and all that is behind the scenes for social media platforms and perhaps even wider, the wider mass media as well. I think that would be something concrete that we'd like to recommend. Thank you, thank you. We'll take a third one. Um, yes, go ahead, Anna. Okay, and you're the fourth. Please go ahead, ma'am. Anna, have a seat, the mic will come to you, yes. Yeah, among the three KSEED meetings that I attended, this, this was the best. Uh, and um, the, the intermixing of people and uh, the inter um, uh, discussions that we had also was one of the best. And um, 
I, I re really made very good friends, and uh, this, this friendship will continue for a long time. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I'm, glad, I'm glad to hear we are mastering the art of conference. Thank you. Yes. Uh, the, the most important thing that I take with me uh, is the training of the faith leaders, the faith communities, the faith representatives, in order to know each other, know the other religions, and that will uh, promote and help about the hate speech. Because we had many incomes that uh, much of the hate speech can stem from the religious leaders themselves or different religions. So what we learned here, educating each other and learning from each other, it's the most important thing that I take with me. Thank you, thank you. Yes, please, number five. Thank you, Kiribati United Religions Initiative. I think we have a real opportunity to work as a consortium of organizations to bring the media companies to the table, and not just to engage with them, but to advise them on how they should be tackling hate speech internally and externally. Terrific. Thank you. Thank you. That's a repeated one for social media. Thank you. Anybody else would like to, to suggest or comment? Yes, please, Imam. And uh, 30 seconds. <laughs> you always have to do that to Imam. <laughs> so so you, you, you have to underline when it comes to Imams. So <laughs> usually we take. Um, first of all, thank you so much. Um, sure. this, is, this was very, um, very um, important, necessary. Uh, don't mind if we seem a bit confused after two years of lockdown. But I think we, we were quite clear. Um, um, one thing I usually take with me, I will take it again, and I suggest that everyone takes again, especially in Europe. You don't get, you don't get anything on the plate. I don't know if it is right in English to say. So you have to do your job. We yes. have to take our responsibility. We have to, to do our part. Uh, don't get, don't let politicians sleep. They have to do also their job because they have to ensure that we sleep well, that our children have a good future. Thank so you. they really have much to do. Thank you. Very good, very good initiatives, very, very good ideas. Uh, we, used, we used to go to, 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 uh, towards them, meet them. So it's, I, I mean, they want to listen, but they also need to be reminded. Thank you. Thank you. We got the message and they got the message. Thank you. Mutual responsibility for the two. Yes, that table has a three, so please try to be brief and then we'll stop probably by that. Go ahead. Uh, thank you so much. I'll be brief. Two concrete suggestions. The first one for next meetings to mainstream the role of climate change and the climate catastrophe that we are living in, in displacing people, but also where the people are settling. One. Two, uh, it takes a lot of courage uh, and bravery to be in this room with all these multi faiths and different backgrounds and experiences, etc. I invite myself and everyone here to have even more courage and take the extra step and the extra mile to discuss things that maybe we don't agree on so much, uh, to bring an anti-colonial perspective to the discussion. Why we are moving, why we are forced to flee, what's the role of conflicts, arms trades, our carbon footprints here in Europe and in the global north on the global south for next times. Thank you, thank you. Yes, please, the second one on the same table. Thank you. I'm Renato Cursi from Don Bosco International. Just one recommendation. Please keep on inviting young people, even more young people, because we need their passion, their vision, and their enthusiasm. I was really moved by the stories of the young activists and leaders here. So please uh, let us invest also on this intergenerational dialogue and solidarity for our social cohesion. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Very good. Excellent. All right. Fe Just two sentences. Be, I, I know how that goes. Yes, go. Yeah, I'll, I'll be short. I'll just remind people to please uh, use what you 
experience during the human library. Take that with you in your everyday, on your everyday journey and stop and listen to any person you meet. Don't just walk past them. If you're curious about something, stop and listen. It will change everything for you and for them. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. All right. Uh, I mean, I want to say something. I see you edging. Atiha, atiha. Thank you. Um, the only thing I would say is the real work actually begins from the moment we step out of this space. And my only request uh, going forward for the future ones will be to actually have the non-converted around the table, those who do not want to engage, want to listen, and how do we deepen our connection and build a relationship. Thank you. All you have a sample of where you stand in this uh, late afternoon, and I think uh, um, the suggestion were recorded as well, and we'll add all this pile to the revised uh, revised um, documents we have in, in in the future, as well as to our plan with the European region to the future. Much appreciated. Let me invite the, uh, our three uh, partners who actually uh, had the major hand in making this event uh, happen. We'll start with the Reverend Dr. Thomas Webb from the Religion for Peace, uh, please. And then... <laughs> and then Dr. Kishan Minoshka, or Minosha, Head of the Tolerance and Non-Discrimination at OS o OSCE, and uh, ODIR as well. Uh, Dr. Kishan. And our uh, dear, uh, beloved uh, Secretary General, Faisal bin Muammar, for leading this operation. Thank you very much, Professor Mohamed Abu Nimer, for excellent moderation of the session. We are now delighted to invite uh, Reverend Theologian Thomas Swift, President of the European Council of Religious Leaders, Religions for Peace, to provide his final reflections and remarks for the closing of this event. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, giving interviews in the Swiss television, I learned I have 17 seconds. Not trend, uh, so I try. First, all, all, already mentioned the networking. This was a learning assembly, a, a learning community. I learned a lot meeting you, not all of you, but mo many of you. Second, um, 10 seconds, I get one point. Secular societies or post-secular post societies were mentioned many times. And the task and responsibility of religious leaders. How can we reach people not belonging to an organized religion traditions? That's the majority in most countries of Europe. Do we have also a task it's easier to talk with our members, but it's not easy to get in touch with this secularized society, people. I have a positive impression of secular, secularization, healthy secularization, we heard. That is my question. I guess 22 seconds. Many thanks, Dr. Whip, for your final remarks and for all the support you have been providing in our journey of preparation of the European Policy Dialogue Forum 2021. Next, I would like to ask Dr. Kishan Manoka, Head of Tolerance and Non-Discrimination at ODIR, which is the OSCE's 
Office for Democratic Institutions and Human Rights to provide his final remarks. You have the floor. Thank you very much. Well, it's very hard to um, add to all that, is, that has been shared, not just today, but uh, over the last three days. But I think it's um, abundantly clear that these days have had or been characterized by great purpose and by an earnest desire to listen to each other, uh, to learn from each other, and to enhance the important, vitally important uh, collaboration between, if you like, the religious sector and the, the policy-making domain, world, for the benefit of all, for the benefit of humanity. So it's a very noble goal, a very noble aim, and I, I would say that everyone who's contributed in person and online deserves a hearty round of applause for approaching this in such an appropriate, inspiring spirit. Um, the contributions have been of a very high quality. Um, the questions have been deeply perceptive and the suggestions and recommendations have been practical and very helpful. So we look now to the next period opening up and we think about the, as we have already been doing these days, the factors, the conditions, the principles, the structures and frameworks that, will, that are conducive to this meaningful, constructive engagement between religious and policy making. And with this um, horizon, if you like, this prospect, I just want to share a few closing thoughts, a few ideas. And one is that the important renewed attention given to religion in policy making does not inadvertently and unconsciously privilege those religions that are deemed more important because they're numerically stronger or more visible. Because that would be to introduce unwittingly a form of discrimination in public life. And we cannot afford that. If this business is about countering discrimination, we must make sure that the means and the ends are at one. And there's no dichotomy there. There's no splintering there. And so we will continue, I think, and I hope, to go out of our way proactively to find voices uh, which can contribute constructively to this ongoing work, this ongoing discourse, irrespective of how many of them may be in a particular society or community at any particular time. And that is, that is uh, important. The second point is that this is a shared enterprise. Uh, we're working towards a collective goal, but at the same time, we need to be careful to respect autonomy of the secular and the religious. The lines will get blurred, yes, but we need to approach that nevertheless with a appropriate regard for the differing and unique standpoints of the religious and the secular. Sometimes, again, it's unwitting, it's unconscious, you find secular policymakers uh, trying to convert the religious to their point of view and vice versa. So when people say, oh, religious people like to convert, I say, mm, put that to one side. I think secular policymakers also like to do the same thing, but we don't call it conversion in that, in that sense. But it's important for that discussion and that dialogue to be robust, to be honest, but where there is difference and there's divergence, so be it, where you find moments where there's a coalescence of you into a common understanding, fantastic. Let's definitely work with that. But don't force it, don't coerce it, however subtly. Let it emerge organically. It does take time, but it is worth the effort. The other thing I would say when it comes to religion in policy making is that I do believe that religious actors need to develop a public theology by which they express their values, 
their ideals in the language that, uh, that can be understood and digested by secular policymakers. So whether it be about the environment, whether it be about social inclusion, whether it be about cohesion, whether it be about the legal or whatever regulation of expression or hate, um, hate speech, need to develop that theology. But it's very important that the distinct religious voice is not lost in translation in the secular space. I was very inspired by a book by Talal Assad on this. I recommend it to you. The book is called Secular Translations. It came out in 2018. And I really wanted to add a few more other thoughts, but I think I will leave it there because I think I've said far too much, but to wish everyone here all the very best uh, in your endeavors. It's been a, a true privilege um, to be among you. And also I wanted to, and I didn't say this at the beginning, pay tribute to our dear colleague Faisal for his outstanding stewardship of Kaisid over these years and wish him all the very best and his family for the future. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Manoka, for your inspiring and motivating words for all of us, which will help us and guide us in our way forward in establishing this event even next year and in many years ahead of us and our work. Finally, we would like to ask His Excellency Faisal bin Muammar, Secretary General of the International Dialogue Center, Kaisid, to provide his concluding remarks and bring this high-level dialogue to a close. Your Excellency. Well, thank you. Thank you, Alexander. Uh, well, you know, if I will let myself speak to you, I would love to speak for the next few hours. But I know you have only 10 minutes, uh, so I have to do my quick remarks. Uh, well, when I started in uh, this business of dialogue 2003, believe me, I don't know what does it mean. What's the definition of the word dialogue? Although in our holy book we read Almost the whole book is about dialogue. It is, you know, so many interesting things, but, and that's what uh, related to the weakness of education. So education, education is really the solution. I mentioned it in my speech. So I would like to uh, ask everybody here, to work day and night to get our recommendations and our work out of the elite's room. We want to reach out with people. And the, the, the magic solution of recommendations or dialogue is to bring the majority to talk to each other. And that's the best defeat, defeat to extremism or people who are uh, 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 organizing themselves with hate speeches, and I think this is really, I, one time I was challenging one of the extremists about his remarks, and uh, I invited him the first uh, one, one day to our session, and he came, and after that he never responded to our invitation, so I asked him why, he said, oh God, when I came to your the dialogue table, you know, I lost my, my authority. The way I can say, send weapons to everybody and nobody can challenge me. So bring them to the dialogue table. You will see how the queue can defeat me. And this is really the cheapest weapon, you know, the cheapest uh, tools to, to defeat all these uh, people who are. The other things, which is social media, they should have really ethical responsibility. I think they are driving people to something we never know. We have to have the ethical responsibility. It cannot be enforced by law, by order. It is self, what you call it, self-belief or self-governing uh, of ourselves. you know. The, our responsibility, we say your thumb is your, your weapons, can bring you to save heaven or to kill you. So this is really how we, we should look at it. I don't want to lecture you. After uh, 12 years of serving Kaisid, I started with three of our staff, and now we are 84. I really I am honored that I learned a lot from them. They are the ones who built this institution from 30 countries. And believe it, I will tell you something. First time in my life, 2010, I shake the hand with a rabbi in my life. I never met a rabbi in my life. so. 
uh, grateful to the uh, to Kaiseed, grateful to Religion for Peace, where I started really the mission with the, uh, Religion for Peace. I learned so much from them. Uh, I will never say, forget our brother, Dr. Findlay, and you. When we meet you, we learn a lot from you. Thank you. We appreciate your partnership. Uh, Dr. Keshan, thank you very much. You know, this is really, uh, I uh, received the book you published, and I'm going to read it, and I'm going to write to you, and I think this is really an excellent partnership. Grateful to everybody who participated with us in Athens, in Germany, and uh, this conference in Lisbon. I decided to do this, you know, in the beginning. I had a lot of discussion with our staff, uh, Dr. Abunimir and the program director and Johannes and the others. I said, please do it in the end of October uh, uh, 2021, because I know that's really the day I will say goodbye to everybody. So this is really for me an honor, you know, to say, okay, we talk about this and we celebrate it in Lisbon and we had very good time and we made so many friends. Through the network we, we made, I think it is really amazing network. But I will tell you, whatever any dialogue institutions do or in their life, it will be limited if we don't reach out with policymaker. Policymaker are the magic solution, not magic solution, but they are the one who will implement any recommendation. Otherwise, we are talking to ourselves. Second, worship places. Let us get them with us to, uh, what do you call it, celebrate our cause or our messages, to take it to their followers. This is very, very important. Otherwise, we speak to ourselves. Then our families, our houses, our uh, community, that's really the places where we really can do. Then, I will not say the last, it should be the fairest, this is the school. The school is very, very important. So if we take the schools and families and worship places and then media. But how can we do that? We have to really work day and night because the whole world started waking up after COVID-19 and in less than a year, they discover the, uh, uh, the vaccine. I believe humanity have a responsibility after, after thousands of years of all the prophets and good people who are bringing their messages, they should have their own vaccine to uh, fight extremism, hate speeches, all ugly things in life. So this is our noble responsibility. I encourage you to do the best. Our heart is with the refugees, with the people who are immigrated from their homes or they left their homes, you know, we will do whatever we can to stand with you. Thanks to our European friends who are really standing and working, uh, working hard to, to, to support uh, whatever we can to, uh, uh, to stand beside the refugees and uh, migrants who are really in need. One of my friends in Germany who was asking me about a thousand of uh, migrants from Syria, I told them, listen, my brother, nobody will leave home just like this. And you know who you are getting from us. I am talking about Syria as my home, second home. You are getting the cream of the cream. So we are losing them. Don't think we are, we are sending them. We are losing them because they are leaving our country. Uh, doctors, engineers, the best of the best. So this is what's happening. You know, whenever any crisis and anywhere in the world, people who are escaping from what is uh, from any conflict are sometimes the intellectual who really wants to have a safe place so they can do their duty and work and uh, so. Uh, you know, we have to be careful, we have to uh, care about our neighbors, we have to care about our community and our families. And as I said, well, sorry, I think I took more of my time, but uh, uh, as I said in my speech, I will devote the rest of my life uh, trying to serve 
dialog wherever it is especially interfaith dialog uh, because it's really for me you know when uh, i i know uh, our brothers here they know what does it mean uh, especially me uh, i'm talking as a muslim uh, when i read the declaration of medina it's really for me it's the the the, the what do you call it the flag i can raise everywhere in the world to say that we need to care about us and the others about we and the others whether we have the same belief or we share different beliefs and that's how we serve humanity anyone who do anything against any individuals no matter what is their belief or non-believers he is a, he or she is a criminal last thing i would like to say i will apologize from one of our sister here she talked to me while we are taking the stairs she said oh mr faisal wake up you don't have many females in in, uh, in the in this conference well i, I hope we have enough. not enough but we will increase them. we will do our best we will do our best i know sometimes we do this mistake but not, uh, I, I, I was asking Johannes and our uh, organizer that next time, if we send an invitation, we will double it to uh, female, <laughs> so we can have equal numbers. <laughs> and this is really what we would love to do. Thank you very much. God bless you all. Safe trip. See you soon, inshallah. Thank you. Many thanks, many thanks, Your Excellency, for your words of motivation, inspiration, and wisdom. I am sure that we are all encouraged by your uh, moving words. We would want to thank also to all of you for your active participation, engagement, and hope that you had the opportunity to learn, network, and start or deepen dialogue with others. We are looking forward to engaging with you in the future. Thank you very much, and all the best. A short announcement from Robert.